Have you heard about vaginal seeding for C-section babies? Find out if it works and if there are benefits and stay till the end to find out the latest recommendations. Hi, I'm Susan White, Certified Nurse Midwife. So what is vaginal seeding? So this is for babies that are delivered by C-section and the maternal vaginal secretions containing the microorganisms are transferred to the newborn. They're also researching transferring maternal intestinal that's from the stool microorganisms to the newborn. So why do vaginal seeding? Well, we know that babies that are delivered by C-section have different what's called microbiome. That means all the different microorganisms, including bacteria, viruses, etc. In their intestines than the babies that are born vaginally. And the ones that are delivered by C-section have fewer of the protective microorganisms. And like we said, they're different microorganisms than those delivered vaginally. And there's still a debate in the research about how long this difference lasts. In one resource, it said it can last from six weeks to four years in the research. So you can see there's a wide variance there. Now, also in the research, some have found that C-section babies have a higher risk of certain health problems, such as asthma, arthritis, allergic disorders, immune disorders, and obesity. However, there's been some other research that didn't find that link. So they're still researching this. So in the research, some are proposing the theory that these different microorganisms in the C-section delivered baby could lead to that higher risk of those health issues. And so they believe that if we restore the vaginal microbiome to those C-section delivered babies, we could decrease the risk of the health problems. However, this has not been proven in research. This is what they're researching right now. So how is vaginal seeding done? Well, if they're trying to restore the vaginal microorganisms to the baby, they'll take a sterile gauze and place that in the mother's vagina for like 15 to 20 minutes before the C-section. And then that gauze is applied to the baby's face, mouth, or skin of the newborn. Um, another way they're researching is to make actually a solution from that diluted vaginal fluid and giving that to the baby by mouth. There's also belief in the research that it might be better to actually give the baby microorganisms from the maternal intestines. And so a study was done in 2020 with just seven newborns and they gave them diluted fecal samples from the mother's stool along with that first human milk feeding and their microbiome looked the same as those delivered vaginally in that study through 12 weeks of life. So does vaginal seeding even work? Does it change the intestinal microbiome? Well, let's look at some other research. And by the way, a link to the references will be in the description. This first research study from 2023 did find similar microbiome between the ones that were C-section with vaginal seeding compared to the vaginally delivered ones. And that uh, those cultures were done at five days of life. And then that study from 2021 by Song, they also found the microbiome of the C-section newborns were similar to, with the vaginal seeding were similar to those of the vaginally delivered babies and that was up to one year of life. Mueller in 23 did find that vaginal seeding changed the microbiome of the babies, but by 30 days there was no difference. And then Wilson tried doing their research with giving the babies by mouth three mils of vaginal solution for their vaginal seeding, and they found no differences in the microbiome of the babies at one month or three months. But does vaginal seeding change health outcomes? This study in 2023 found no difference in growth or allergy risk up to two years of life with vaginal seeding compared to those C-section babies that didn't get it. However, they also found no difference in the microbiome. And then Sasson concluded in 2022 that by that point in time, there have been no clinical studies that have shown a clear health benefit for vaginal seeding. Anthelaki in 23 said that even though we can change the microbiome, evidently, we don't know the long-term health implications of that. But Zhao in 23 did find higher neurodevelopmental scores at three and six months for those babies that had vaginal seeding. And it was a parent-completed developmental questionnaire called ASQ3 that was used. However, there is a limitation on this because there was a small sample size of only 30 patients per each group. Would you like to learn more about benefits and risk of different interventions and how to prepare for childbirth? Check out my classes in the description below. There's a link. 
So are there any risks to vaginal seeding? Well, yes, if mom has a vaginal infection that can be transmitted to the baby. So if she has group beta strep, if she has some type of sexually transmitted disease like gonorrhea or chlamydia, that can be transmitted to the baby with vaginal seeding. And so mom does need to be tested for those before vaginal seeding is done. And there has been a case of herpes being transmitted to the baby after vaginal seeding. So why might vaginal seeding not work to improve health outcomes? Well, according to a lot of the resources, we don't really have enough research that is going to account for other factors that can change the microbiome and that can change health outcomes in the baby. So let's look at what some of those could be. And so there's a lot of factors that can affect the baby's microbiome and their health outcomes. If mom has obesity or chronic diseases, that's going to make a difference. The gestational age of the baby, if mom gets antibiotics in labor, and all C-section patients get antibiotics, by the way. If mom is breastfeeding or not, we know breastfeeding babies do have better health outcomes and their microbiome is different because of the breast milk. Also, what if mom had some type of environmental exposure into uterine environment? So what if there's some kind of problems with the placenta or there's some type of infection in the uterus or the amniotic fluid? And then this is what's really interesting. If they look at the microbiome of vaginally delivered and C-section delivered babies, they are by one year of age in a lot of the research exactly the same. So here's the bottom line of what you need to know. Is vaginal seeding recommended? Well, at this point in time, according to ACOG, the American College of OB and GYN physicians, they recommend to not do vaginal seeding unless it's in a research study. And that's because we don't have enough information yet on how safe it is and if there are any benefits of the procedure. So check out my classes and a link to the references are on the description. Thank you.